Alright, hello and welcome to Campbell Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today is indeed FOMC day. Today is the day that we get to find out whether we get a 25 basis point hike or a pause or indeed a nasty surprise in the form of a 50 basis point rate hike from the Fed. Long time viewers of the channel will know I proposed this inverse head and shoulders and this melt up scenario all the way back in the summer of last year. We have since then been able to tick off the 50 basis point hike. We have since then ticked off the 25 basis point hike. And so the question is, is today the day that we get the pause or have we got to see one more 25 basis point hike that sets up the pause at the next meeting? I don't actually think it matters whether the Fed pauses today or not. I certainly think the market will thrive and do better if we see a pause, but we don't have to have a pause today. And the reason for this is all the market really needs is the hint or a possibility of a pause in the next meeting. That will be enough for the markets to front run that pause. And that will also be enough, in my opinion, to see us break out of here and target a much higher number for the US equities and Bitcoin. The reason I'm so confident in saying that it doesn't really matter what we see, so long as it's not a 50 basis point hike, is because as you can see here, we are just under 90% probability of seeing a 25 basis point hike from the Fed today, with only a little bit over 10% chance that we see a pause today. So a 25 basis point hike is entirely priced in at the moment. This pause today would see us set up a massive, massive, massive risk on rally across the board. As long as we don't see a 50 basis point hike surprise, which I think would be very, very bearish. I think markets will react horribly to that. But as long as we don't see that, then I think we should be all systems go for putting some risk back on and seeing what the market can give. There's a rumor going around at the moment that the Treasury and the Fed is going to need somewhere between 17 and 18 trillion to guarantee all the bank deposits. So imagine the amount of upside in risk assets if this is to be confirmed. If the Fed is going to print what is that, like three or four times more than the entire C19 era of printing? Imagine what is going to happen to the price of Bitcoin and equity markets. There's still a lot of people out there that I see criticizing this liquidity argument. They say that it's not all about liquidity. There isn't sufficient liquidity in the system. Well, just take a look at this chart. The US liquidity is the blue one here. And as you can see, absolutely through the roof. So don't make the mistake of thinking this isn't all about liquidity because it indeed is and there certainly is enough being injected into the system to drive markets higher in the near term. Remember, I've been showing this over and over again. The Fed balance sheet undid half of its quantitative tightening in just a week last week. So make no mistake, the printer is up and it is running. The Fed has indeed joined the QE camp with China, Japan and Switzerland. The ECB, the European Central Bank, will soon follow. So here's the Fed balance sheet starting to spike in blue. The Bank of Japan is way ahead of the curve. They have just set a new high for the total amount of assets held by their central bank on their balance sheet. The Swiss National Bank is close to all-time highs. And it's the same story for the Central Bank of China. As you can see, new all-time high for the central bank's assets on their balance sheet. The printer is running. Make no mistake about it. So the big question is, how does the Fed balance sheet expansion correlate with the US equities and Bitcoin? Well, there's a 97%, it's over 97% correlation with the S&P that when the Fed starts expanding its balance sheet, the S&P moves up with it. And the same is true of Bitcoin, albeit a lower correlation. But you can see here the Bitcoin price is the candlesticks. The red is the Fed balance sheet. Whenever the Fed starts to rapidly expand its balance sheet, like it's starting to now, very, very, very good things happen to the price of Bitcoin walking forward. You can see here we went from around $3,000 to a high of around $65,000. And that is because... Bitcoin will front run the expansion of the Fed balance sheet. Bitcoin will front run the inflation that follows after such an aggressive Fed balance sheet expansion. And therefore, this is the perfect storm to see a massive, massive, massive melt up scenario unfold for Bitcoin and the US equities. Speaking of Bitcoin, a bill has been introduced in Texas to boost local Bitcoin economy and protect the rights of holders, miners and developers. So again, we continue to see adoption. We continue to see more and more states move to embrace and protect Bitcoin. And I'm sure this is a trend we'll continue to see. Meanwhile, in blue here, underneath the Bitcoin price, is the amount of Bitcoin supply held by entities with less than 10 Bitcoin. As you can see, up and to the right. So people continue to want exposure to Bitcoin. They continue to accumulate Bitcoin. And the Gini coefficient, which is a way of measuring the distribution, the wealth distribution in a system, continues to trend down as a result of this. Unlike the fiat currency system, where a very, very small handful of people control the entire supply relative to the majority of people that control almost none of it, the distribution of wealth for Bitcoin continues to be more fairly distributed over time. Bitcoin is the only ethically sound money available. And so leading into the FOMC, just before we get into some charts, the big question is, are we going up or down? Well, Kush here, he sees two paths, straight up 
or a drop down, which I would like to add, I'll show you when we get to the charts in a minute, would line up with this cycle low before then a bounce. If you're a bear, you're gonna to wanna to see this fractal repeat for 2008. As you can see, quite a similar look here. This is my preferred way to analyze the market at the moment by ignoring all the competing narratives, ignoring all of the news and just focusing on the charts. This is the triple Qs, the NASDAQ. This is possibly the most straightforward bullish rotation imaginable. We got a triple bottom right here, okay? Followed by a range break above this purple dashed line. And that range break also occurs by taking out and breaking above the 200 day moving average. We then break higher, come down, retest the breakout line and the 200 day moving average multiple times before now resuming an uptrend. This is data, this is objective fact. As it stands, this is bullish. This is a bullish rotation looking for higher numbers. Does not preclude a move lower, but until we get a move lower, this is bullish and the trend is up. So with all that said, let's get rid of this red line here. This is the dollar. Long time viewers of the channel will know that when we put this blue upward sloping support line in, we said eventually at some point we would come down and break it. We had a false dawn here. However, it does seem to be playing out exactly as planned as it stands. Now, of course, this move could be reversed and it could be reversed sharply today. But as it stands, that hasn't happened yet. Here's the chart of truth, the US 10 year yield. Certainly on the cards to see a counter trend bounce before a resumption lower. It will be really important to watch this chart as a gauge for risk over the coming days and weeks. If you want to see risk come on like I do, then you'll want to see this break down. The same is true of the US two year yield. So any hint of a pause, whether that pause comes today or whether they hint at pausing at the next FOMC, I expect to see a nosedive in the two year yield. I expect to see the bond market calling out the Fed and believe me, risk will come on strongly if those conditions are met. Here's TLT. To me, this looks heavy at the moment, although there's nothing to stop this coming up and breaking out. That of course is to be determined. So here's the S&P. Are we going to get this breakout retest resumption? Is this going to be catalyzed by the FOMC today? Are you going to see Camel go long on a breakout of this downward slope in purple resistance line? Quite possibly. I certainly expect some volatility. However, the cycle count is currently telling us to expect one further dive down into that daily cycle low before then we can think about resuming an uptrend and saying goodbye to this bear market. As it stands, I'm kind of neutral. I'm open to all outcomes. Tech is leading, as you can see. It's the exact same setup. Once we get a breakout above the resistance line, in this case, it's a green one instead of a purple one. We add the long, we put a stop just below and we see what the market can give. So a break above this high here would be confirmation of full bull uptrend in my opinion. However, any kind of rejection and rollover here and we have to go back to neutral and see what happens going forward. Here's the Dow Jones. So breakout, retest, retest again of the bear market resistance line. Now trying to flip this into support. Confirmation for me will come on a break above this yellow trend line. If we can do that on a daily closing basis, I will be looking to add longs for the Dow as well. So expect me to tell you I've gone long if we can close above this yellow line today. The VIX continues to look like we got out of the VIX on time. I don't think we need this anymore. If I zoom out here and extend this trend line, you can kind of see that this was quite a technical move up into resistance. So can we continue this downtrend? Can we get down into the teens like I would like to see? This, of course, would provide the fuel for us to finally see this blow off top move in the equity markets. This would also coincide with major upside for Bitcoin. And then I think towards the summer, we can start to entertain what I believe will be the biggest trade of the year, which is a long VIX trade out of this range, targeting a massive spike above the COVID peak here. Here's the Russell 2K kind of in no man's land for me at the moment. So we'll see what can happen. If we can get some kind of move and a break out of this, then expect me to tell you I've gone long the Russell as well. But playing patiently for now, this is certainly showing relative weakness relative to the Dow, the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. The UKX, I think a patience is going to be rewarded here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of chop in this range before we get a breakout. But once we do, again, I'll be long on that breakout of this downward sloping yellow resistance line. Here's Tesla. So Tesla, have you seen this before? If I pause here and say, where have we seen this recently? Well, of course the answer is we've seen it in Apple. Apple, we had this box, we broke down, created this sort of bear trap, got back inside the box, chopped around and now breaking out. So it looks to me like Tesla is doing the same sort of thing. We had this range in the box, we had this breakdown, now we're back inside the box. So for me, this is still neutral. For me, we still expect a bit of chop around. If we can get a breakout above the top of this box, then that can be a long trigger for me until such time. I'm not really interested in trading Tesla. Apple has indeed closed a daily candle outside, so this could well be a long, but as I said in yesterday's video, I wanted to get through today. I wanted to get through FOMC because there's nothing to say that we won't get some horrible hawkish talk that scares the market in the short term and we do something like this before then resuming. So currently not long Apple, but looking to get long Apple. Same is true of Tesla. Get a breakout above there and I'll be looking to get long for Tesla as well. 
Bitcoin continuing to do Bitcoin things, isn't it? So not much more to say about this apart from long and strong continue to push, see what the market can give. Absolutely open to a throwback of this yellow range breakout before we can resume higher, but I do expect us to resume higher before then at this next cycle low, which is due around the 7th of May. Exactly the same is true of Ethereum. So long and strong continue to push. And of course, XRP, we have a new position in XRP. So buy stop triggered on XRP. Long time viewers of the channel will know that we actually attempted this same trade back here. So we got long on a break of this red line and then we kind of got stopped out when it took out this low back here. So we had a copy and paste template of this trade. It looked something like this. That trade didn't work out, but we're having a second crack at it, as you can see here. So currently long XRP, currently strong XRP. Again, another trade called out well ahead of time. So hopefully no surprise to you there. And lastly, the crypto related equities. Here's Coinbase. So again, not much more to say apart from long and strong continue to push and we'll see what can happen over the next couple of days. MicroStrategy, same deal. Long and strong continue to push. Riot is leading massively. Look at that. I love to see this. So natural resistance at this cluster of highs back here at around 10 and a half. I still think massive, massive, massive upside for Riot in the short to medium term. Here's Marathon as well. Marathon is starting to build up a bit of steam. So we love to see it. We'll see what can happen going forward. Here's gold. So is this the rollover? Is this one final dip down? Are we going to come down here as risk comes on following FOMC? And then I think we, what we can buy is the final dip before a massive, massive, massive bull run for the precious metals. Here's silver again. Is this what we're going to do? So that, of course, remains to be seen. If we can get this kind of setup, absolutely beautiful to trade as we come down here and then long the breakout from down here, it will look something like this. So can we get that? That, of course, remains to be seen. Miners still not outpacing, still just kind of following the price of gold action. And the fact that silver is not outpacing either, all of this kind of speaks to central bank buying this gold move rather than a true bull market. Now, that's not to say I don't think gold's not going to do really good things because I think gold and silver and the miners are all going to present a 10x opportunity over the coming next, say, eight years. But I am cautious about hopping in at this moment in time. So we'll see what FOMC can bring. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not already and turn the notifications on if you want to continue to get updates on all of these markets in real time and how I deal with them as a pro swing trader for free, including trade setups called out well ahead of time. Let me know if you know another trader that shows you every single one of their positions and calls them out well ahead of time. Because as far as I'm aware, I'm the only person that does this. Expect volatility and chop through FOMC. Let the dust settle and make sure you come back tomorrow to see my thoughts going forward. In the meantime, I hope you're doing well in life. Take care from me, all the best. Cheers, bye. We are very confident that our banking sector is uh, solid. The Fed's balance sheet is up by $297 billion. It's all a Fugazi, you know what Fugazi is? Let's see what Credit Suisse's appetite is. Yeah. It's Credit Suisse taken out by UBS. The market's in seek and destroy mode. Search and destroy. Preliminary investigation that will be led out of the FBI's field office in San Francisco. I think this is really a strong sign that also institutions are buying. This is Bitcoin's moment. Bitcoin rising over the past week amid fears of contagion in the traditional banking system.